So this is the interview we did with Steph um, the other night. Instagram didn't want me to upload it, so I'm doing an intro page here. I'm going to stick it on YouTube. So if you're watching this, you're on YouTube or Vero. So it's just an interesting interview with Steph, who qualified four years ago from Manchester University Brit Dental School. And she's been a follower of mine for a couple of years, and I've been, so I've been directly coaching her. She's been nagging me, and this is just an interview of how she got on as an undergraduate, which might be interesting from an undergraduate point of view, and how she felt about prosthetics at the beginning, how she felt at the end, and what she thinks of it now. So this is episode one. We're probably going to do two or three of these. So hope you enjoy it. And this, shouldn't it, people? This should be easier than this. Right. Steph's back. Hi, I'm back now. Steph is... <laughs> well done. So you can hear me. I can. All oh, right. Okay. So we can both be heard, I think. Should we start again? Take yeah. three. <laughs> so, so Steph's been putting up with my... Um, Instagram posts for longer than most people. I don't know what, at what level I was um, being followed when you joined. Can you remember? Maybe like a couple two, of years ago. 2K, 2K followers. Okay. So. Oh, we've come on a bit since then. Anyway, so Steph's my most enthusiastic follower. And she's nagged me like mad at the beginning. I used to get messages on a Monday morning, Mike. You know, it's <laughs> like, what I do? <laughs> so Steph is now here to tell us about her journey from... Um, I think we're going to do this over three episodes. So this is the first one, which were, I'm going to reckon around for 10, 15 minutes. Um, I had a student ask me, or a couple of weeks ago now, is I want to like prosthetics. I want to get into it. Uh, strange thing to say. So I thought, um, Steph's now been qualified for, qualified for how long? Four years. Okay, so four years out, four years out of dental school. So I thought we'd go back to the beginning so people can see you can get to be okay at prosthetics and love it after only four years of being in practice. So I'm supposed to be not doing so much talking, <laughs> which I'm for, <laughs> and Steph's going to so I thought I'd start with, so Steph's going to say, let's go back to dental school and tell us about your first opinions of prosthetics when you were an undergraduate. Well, how did it all start and what did you think? So as an undergraduate, I didn't, you didn't really get much experience in terms of dentistry. I remember, I think, in, when they actually let you loose on patients, which is in second year. I graduated in Manchester, for anyone that's interested. Our first patients were a set of patients that just didn't have any teeth, and you have to make them a set of full falls. So you kind of get thrown in right into the deep end. And I can't say the teaching was amazing. I ended up hating it. Like, I just didn't understand what I was looking for. I didn't know what a good impression was. I didn't really know. I remember we all didn't even know what we were going to do in the first kind of appointment with the patient. We didn't know how to take history kind of thing. So to throw that in and then having to make a set of dentures was incredibly difficult. And that kind of just set the standard for dentures. It was like these, this dark art that no one really understood. No one liked. No one just didn't understand why we did it and how to do it and then from then it kind of just you kind of just wanted to get to get it done and just kind of move on to the teeth bit which was the most exciting bit where you could pick up a drill and start doing some fillings rather than make a set of teeth for someone that doesn't have any teeth that would just be doomed to failure mainly because you didn't really understand what you were doing so it's quite negative so what, what, what resources did you have then if you were say you were chucked in at the deep end you must have had some lectures which maybe weren't thrilling yeah. What did they did they do for you to say, well, go and look at this, go and read that? Did they did they make it less difficult if you wanted to put yourself out or not? So it was a P, it's a PBL, so it's a problem based course in general. So a lot of it where you had to do your own kind of background reading. And um, although it was kind of like a number of years ago now, you didn't really look on Instagram or YouTube for for videos of how to take an impression. There wasn't really that resource there. It was more just textbooks of this is what it's supposed to look like but there wasn't really an explanation of the step-by-step -step stages you need to do the kind of scenarios that you get in practice so in terms of that it wasn't that great i mean you had the lectures and the lecturers albeit would say you know make sure the trade's not underextended and it, i remember saying well i don't even know what that means and no one really kind of asked you kind of just assumed you knew and i remember the a4 piece of paper that they gave you before and it was a checklist and one of them was like, just check your extensions. And I'm like, what extensions? Doesn't it just have to fit in the mouth kind of thing? And that's it. Well, that, that's quite interesting because the next question I was going to come up with is, did your peers enjoy dread or avoid prosthetics? For the same reason you've just said, it's like, off you go, learn to swim, chuck yeah. you in the deep end. Is that 
Is that the way it happens? Yeah. Well, that's really unfair. From my peers now, even now, they everyone doesn't seem to like dentures. And when someone asks me why do you like them so much, they're almost confused. Whereas you, whereas if you say you like bonding or Invisalign, everyone's like, oh yeah, I totally get that. That's great because you get instant results and you get this instant beautiful smile. Whereas dentures, it's not kind of the pretty side of dentistry. It's a great side of dentistry to go in because the impact that you can have is incredible. But it takes a lot more time. It's a lot more appointments rather than those instant results. And I think a lot of the time with my peers as well, even at an undergraduate level, everyone was kind of the same thing. They were like, oh, but, you know, it's just a denture. I want to get into this nitty gritty bit of root canal and crowns and bridges. And that kind of that's that stigma. And I still think that stigma is still there even now even though we've, we're trying as best we can to prove that actually dentures are pretty cool and you can help a lot of people with them and you can so get results now. Did, no, did nobody like it then as an undergraduate? You, you, I mean, you didn't rock up on thinking, great, this is prosthetics. Did anybody turn up thinking, I'm looking forward to prosthetics in your year no, group? definitely. I couldn't find Not one. I no. Didn't, no, I, I didn't like it then either. Like, because I was so bad at it and I was just like, well, I don't really get it. I don't have that much support. So you kind of just did it. And I remember the first set of dentures that I made, they were awful and I had to remake them the year after. <laughs> what were the books like? I mean, you said they said, go and look at books or something. Were the books any, I, I, don't, I can't see, personally, I can't see books working no. for this. You've got five think... series, which I think was quite a popular book. It was like a 10 series guide and there was definitely one for dentures, which was pretty good. It had lots and lots of pictures in but you physically can't see someone take an impression. It's just, again, it's static pictures. Whereas I think with our jobs, you kind of need to see someone retract the lip. You need to see where to see it. It's really difficult to get a picture of it. So the books were okay, but they're definitely not brilliant. And a lot of it as well was just anatomy, where the muscles are supposed to be, horrible black and white drawings that you're just not going to get. Just strange. So, and yet the first cases you were given were complete dentures, yep. were they? I remember my first patient as well. It was full, full... He was lovely. He actually gave me a present at the end, which ironically is a key ring with a denture on. <laughs> um, but yeah, not great. Not great at all, really. And no, and everyone seems to have the same experience. They'll be like, oh, Monday morning, it's the denture cases. It's the jaw edge. And that wax rim would just fall out every single time. But because everyone, everyone else has fell out as well, it was kind of like an expected thing. So it's, it's okay because mine fell out, but so did yours and so did yours. So it was just the norm. <laughs> did, did you ever talk to the labs at any point when you were doing this? I mean, did you ever see what they were doing or did they ever chat to you or is it somewhere you just didn't go as an undergraduate? I knew where the lab was. Um, you go up there to deliver your lab work sometimes and kind of collect it again. I think further on when I progressed, when I went into the third and fourth year and I started to actually develop an interest for it, I started to get on with the lab a little bit better. In my, one of my final cases, I made a precision denture. So I did, a, you know, the precision attachments and then I put a denture on top. Now, looking back, that's actually a really complex kind of dentistry that I did, but I didn't appreciate it at the time. Um, but in terms of communication with the lab, no, it was nil. They didn't have time. Like they've got, you know, you're at a dental school. They've got thousands of patients. You ask for a special tray, they're going to give you this big, massive, bulky thing with loads of holes in it. And you just kind of expected to use it and kind of just move on. Funny, how much, how much lab work did you do before on Phantom Head and that, before you did it for real? I mean, Bristol, they do quite a lot. I don't know whether other schools do or not. And does it, does it help at all, doing Phantom Head? Or yeah. Lab making rims and that, did it, did it help you on clinic? It doesn't sound like it made a huge amount of difference. Um, we were taught by technicians. Um, I think in the second year, we went to Manchester Metropolitan Uni and we kind of walked down the road and there was a lab there. And the idea of that was that you made your own rims and you... And I don't think you made your special trays, but you made your own rims with the, the base plate. But that was a disaster. I remember we all just were just sat in this room. No one really understood what was, what was going on kind of thing. There was no like kind of sequence to it. But I don't know if that was just my experience at Manchester. Someone else might have a different experience at a different uni. Um, but from what I can tell anyway, even as a postgrad now, for when I'm doing courses and meeting other delegates, it's kind of the same thing. It's oh, I've got a denture case. I just, the denture doesn't fit. The patient keeps coming back. The endless review appointments. It seems to be a thing even post-grad. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't get easier then, no, does it? No, it's not great. So I get, I get why everyone's struggling with it. And that's why we kind of want to help and be like, well, actually, 
it's not as hard as everyone thinks. It's just trying to get stuck in and try and understand what you're doing. And then once you understand it, you can kind of build on your knowledge from there. It's interesting you started with completes. We stopped complete, um, using completes as the first entry cases probably 15, 20 years ago at Bristol because we thought currently most of the patients now are dentists have got are really difficult to treat because they've got yeah, no ridges. Yeah. And we started, we, we changed the rule and we try, start, try and start them on partial dentures um, to sort of integrate the, the, the understanding that you restore teeth with a view to making dentures. Did you get any of that? Or was it completely segregated? Restorative dentistry is restorative and prosthetics is filling the gaps with plastic. Is that, is that your take? Or? It, I was in second year because that's kind of how it felt like because you, you, didn't, you didn't see any patients with teeth. You just saw patients with no teeth. So it's kind of like it had its own, own section and you did that. And then once you successfully did that, you can go into third year and now you can start treating patients with teeth. There was never this thing where you could both go together almost and when you start to do partials you were treating the teeth first and you kind of end up with a partial kind of thing um, I think Rupert's just said that as well complete dentures yeah and the complete denture cases that we saw they're not straightforward they're referred to the hospital for a reason so you're kind of fighting a losing battle here you're an undergrad you've never made a denture you've been thrown in full falls which are still really hard to do and you're kind of expected to go with it <laughs> I think you're exactly right there. I mean, that why do they get referred to the hospital? Because the GDPs can't treat them. And then bless the yeah. students who've got zero experience. The poor things, they've got to go and, you know, work this magic. And you've got this expectation from the patients that, you know, OK, you're a student, but, you know, you're at the hospital. You've got a supervisor there. So it should be better. I mean, the materials were brilliant. You get everything that you need. But then go to real practice. You don't have anything. So you had everything you need, but you didn't know what to yeah. do with it. Then you get into practice, you don't know what to do with it, and you no, haven't got it. Exactly. <laughs> so, again. <laughs> that's, that's the story from FDs. Year after year, I get now. People graduate, and they send me messages. They haven't got any compound. They haven't got any green stick. Um, or they haven't got the right trays. So, yeah. So when you know what to do, you can't do it. And when you, when you don't know what to do, you've got the stuff to do it, and you can't actually do it. So, okay, so. yeah. Yeah. Um, Strange. So you didn't do, to, was there much treatment planning done when you got to the, to the partial cases? Did you do treatment planning with planning the restorations before you did the treatment, for instance? Do you mean like crowns and things like that? And, and... Yeah, or, or just fillings, the right shape or, you know, guide surfaces or did you take study models, for instance, and then work out, or would it have made any sense? No, it would have definitely made sense now and it would definitely be more helpful than it was, but... Again, you kind of just, when you're an undergrad, you're kind of fighting to survive. You just want to just do what you have to do. You've got a list of competencies that you need to do. You've got five fillings, three root canals, crowns, and it's kind of a checkbox box list and you have to just go through it. The treatment planning is there and it's always treat the perio, treat the gums first, which you kind of did do. But the more complex bit of integrating your denture and how your denture is going to sit or the most basic thing is like, now that I know, like looking at a tooth and thinking, is there undercut there? Is that class really going to stay there? That just wasn't a thing and that wasn't even taught. So sadly not, I'm afraid. It's, it's surveying is quite interesting, isn't it? It's, I think it's just, it's just a subject that just glosses, flies by everybody's undergraduate. Yeah, it? It, was, it's, it was discussed. I remember we had a small seminar at the beginning of clinic and it and I think the tutor on, the, on, on clinic brought the surveyor and he was like, what's this? And we all just looked at like, I don't know, some instrument that no one cares about. And then he, we, we kind of threw it and then it was like, okay, cool. But the technician does that. So therefore it's not my job. And you kind of just leave it there. As soon as it say, oh, the lab will do that. Students kind of switch off. So Yeah, that's, that's true. Somebody else can do it. It's fine, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. And then you leave without knowing. So Yeah. And, oh. yeah. And that's kind of like your journey. I mean, as you progress throughout the years, I think as an undergrad, I did get, I did have an interest in dentures, but I was kind of struggling to find where to get better at it. I mean, there's, you could go to the lab and sit with the lab for a bit, which would be great. But as an undergrad, you just don't really have that time. You've got all these other specialities, you've got all med or surgery that you want to get good at as well. And it's kind of combining all of them together, which is a struggle. And bless, like an undergrad as well, you're overwhelmed. You've never treated patients before. You're even learning how to communicate with them. And then you expected to make them this great set of teeth that aren't going to fall out. And it's really, really challenging that in that aspect as well, the communication bit, which some people will be more naturally gifted than others. But that takes years to develop as well. You're not just going to be great at it overnight. 
Yeah, it's, pro it's probably true. I mean, I just, I don't know how you guys, I mean, I was talking to a student the other day. How do you, I mean, you sit there with a prosthetics tutor, all they want you to do is learn prosthetics. And then you go to oral med, they want to learn oral med, then it's also, and it's peds. It's like, how do you cope with it all? And, you know, as, as you get really slightly disappointed that people don't take it on board but from your point of view it's just a mass of work isn't it everything's going to you and you just got to do it all and but to, but to literally just learn what you what you need from that subject and kind of go on to the next like what do i need to know for oral surgery i need to know what my forceps are what the luxators are how to read an x-ray move on peds four crowns how to treat do a pulpotomy next kind of thing there's not really much oh, let's have a look at it if you're more interested. Let's do some more reading and kind of gauge an interest because you just don't have time because dentistry is just so broad. There's too many topics, too many things that you can go into. Uh, so how many cases? What's the expectation of cases? I mean, in Bristol now, the, the ratio has gone down and down and down over the years, the number of cases yeah. you do. How many cases do you reckon you saw in the end? And complete? More than one of any one sort? More than one oh. complete? I think I did two completes only because in my finals you can kind of choose what you want to do and I kind of like dentures so I did I did a complex denture towards the end but that was me looking for a patient I went around loads to try like loads of people and loads of clinics to try and find a decent patient but you can kind of get away with just doing one denture I think at Manchester you just needed to do one partial one full I think I kind of got away with not even doing a chrome at that point I had to remake a chrome so I didn't even look into the design of the things I kind of just copied it and they were like it's fine <laughs> it was kind of again just a tick box tick box exercise so not many not many not many and that, that was the same for everybody i'm guessing yeah yeah definitely everyone yeah i think there was other priorities as well um getting as many extractions in as possible i think by the end of it everyone just had to have five extractions because there was such a shortage of patients so i graduated having done five extractions one root canal two dentures which isn't great and and at the point you graduate I, does that bother you? Are you thinking, oh my God, I haven't done much? Or is it like, oh, I don't want to do it again? No, it bothered me because you go into general practice as a, and as a foundation dentist and you have no idea what you're doing. Never mind, you know, you, 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 I mean, one of the first patients I treated in general practice was a denture patient and I'm just trying to rack my brains of what I could remember as an undergrad, which wasn't very much. But again, you look at your colleagues and they're kind of like, oh, just take an impression, sense the lab, it will be fine. Your colleagues are just as knowledgeable as you, from what I found. And everyone's like, oh, yeah, dentures, the dark arts, they don't really fit. You kind of just accept it and move on. And that's the way it is for everybody. Yeah, even now. <laughs> and it, it, that's interesting, isn't it? So um, what was I going to ask you? So what was your view at graduation? Is it, right, I'm not going to do any more dentures. It, it sounds like you had a bit more interest than the bulk of your year. Or did you get to the point of thinking, I can't be bothered anyway? Yeah, I mean, I, li I, re I did like dentures. I liked them a lot, but I didn't know how to fake them. The dentures I was making were awful, but I also had an interest in ortho, and then I had an interest in TMD, and I was doing all sorts of things. Um, but then as I started to do more cases, I thought, no, actually, I kind of enjoy, enjoy dentures, but um, I just don't know how to get better at it. So that's when I started taking pictures of impressions. And in my practice, in my foundation practice, there was a dentist that really liked making dentures. So I kind of went towards him, but that was more towards the end that I found that out. And I started to get advice and then actually it really helped because I thought, oh, actually there are some people that know what they're doing. And then it kind of just grew from there. And then from that, I thought, right, okay, well, I like dentures. I'm not very good at dentures. I have more of an idea than most people. What can I do next? And then I stumbled upon Instagram and you. <laughs> And it kind of grew from there. So why did you like dentures then? What makes you... How can you make more people like dentures? What, what, what turns people off that, that we can stop that happen? I think the lack... I think in terms of why I like them, I'll answer those two questions separately. I like them because I kind of like getting to know patients. And with dentures, the expectations, especially that you're treating older people, even younger people, they just want a good set of teeth that don't fall out. And because there's like six appointments to a denture, really, if you're including reviews and if you're doing it properly, you really get to know them and you develop a relationship with them and you can kind of have a laugh. There's not really much in terms of drilling or numbing them up. So there's kind of, that kind of thing's not there. So your aim is really just to have a nice chat with them, get to know them, know what they want from their dentures. Is it cosmetic or is it literally function? And you can kind of build on that. And every appointment, you get to know them a bit more 
And then when it comes to fit, they actually can leave your surgery smiling and thinking, yeah, I've made a difference to that person. They can eat, they can speak, they can go out and not be ashamed and hide their face. So that's why personally I like them. But I totally get why those people don't like them because they're so difficult to make if you don't know what you're doing, which I guess that's the same with everything. So that's my aspect of it. Um, I can't remember your last question. I, I said I was going to answer it into two, but I don't know what they did. <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, the other question was, that you know, I was going to say, if you went back and you were a student again, I don't know from what you've said, I'm not sure you could make it any easier. You could. Because you this mountain of workload haven't you huge workload yeah. you guys have to do but there is technology now we've got videos we've got iphones that are brilliant that you can now take videos on clinic even just the instagram that we've got at the moment it's it's just short small things that everyone can kind of pick up on it's not you know you're not going to walk in on clinic after going on a, on a day course or two day course and become an expert it's just small things you can pick up on say for example on a monday morning you know you've got dentures so you've got dentures to make just pl kind of just even take 15 minutes just to look at what you're doing, have a look on Instagram, look at the videos, just think, okay, I'm going to take an impression. What do I need? It's simple things of I'll add wax or I'll look at the extension. But it's just looking into that and taking the time to do that, which some people will do because they genuinely want to get better at it. Whereas a lot of people will be like, mm, okay, I'll have a quick look, kind of do it on clinic and move on to the next thing. There is an interest there. You have to have an interest in what you want to do and how you want to do it. But I think our job is to try and encourage you guys to understand that actually it is quite fun. And when you get good at it, it's really fun when you can fit a denture and it doesn't fall out. Like it will make your day <laughs> because you know you've made a great impact on their lives. So you keep, you keep on about modifying trays without pointing the finger at any particular establishment. <laughs> Are, <laughs> do undergraduates genuinely get taught, not necessarily just at, at, at Manchester, to modify trays before they take impressions. I mean, you know, most people on your, your FD group that didn't come from yeah. Manchester. What was, what was their experience as undergraduates in, in, because in, I think impressions, you, you would agree now, I'm sure, that impressions are almost the biggest thing. Yeah. If you get that right, it can get easier afterwards. I mean, what, what's your experience of, of people who graduate elsewhere, of what, what they do with modifying trays, or do they just literally cross their fingers and alginate in the mouth and off you go? So thinking back at my foundation group and the trainers that we all had, it was, again, it's your look, as um, Rupert just said as well, it's your look of what, what, what kind of practice you've land into. There are some practices which may be brilliant at dentures and they've got someone, a pro specialist that can help guide you. Or you can have someone that hates dentures and has no idea about them and is all about, I don't know, cosmetic dentistry, bonding, that kind of thing. But in general, from what I gathered from my group and then as an FD in general, you kind of get a special tray. You think it's special because it's got the name special in it. You think the lab's made it, so they must know what they're doing. And so you think, okay, you just literally look at it and thought, oh, I've got a special tray. This is going to be great. I'm not skipping steps here. You kind of slump it in the mouth. It, obviously, it's going to fit technically because it's made for the patient and it's special again. So you think, yep, great. And then you just take the impression, hope for the best and kind of move on. And I think a lot of it is the understanding of this word special tray is people just think, oh, you know, the first, the, your first impression isn't going to be brilliant anyway, because it's a custom tray. But the custom tray, you know, it's one size fit all kind of thing. You don't tend to modify that either. I, I mean, I didn't really do it until probably like a few months, well, maybe six months ago. And then you kind of just go on to the next step. Well, that special tray is going to fit. And you kind of just put it in and it does fit and you move on. And my tutors from my pra from my old practice or my peers as well, we all kind of just did the same thing. We just thought, oh, yeah, OK, well, I don't get these dentures, but I'm doing all the steps. I'm doing the special tray. And then all of a sudden, the, and then, 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 then we'll go, oh, but we also do the bite at the same point. And as bad, you want to do the bite at the appointment, but all your colleagues on the NHS do it. So it must be fine because they're fitting dentures all the time and it's fine. So what's wrong with that? <laughs> And then you find out, and then you find out. They understand <laughs> that you shouldn't do it, and there's a reason why you're not taught it as undergrads. I mean, at, at undergrad level, you are taught, you know, you need five, at least five appointments. You're not doing exposure to AMS with your bite reg. You might not be taught why, or you might, you might have been taught why, but you forget conveniently when you go into practice, when you find all your other colleagues not doing that, you're saving yourself an appointment. So you think, brilliant, I've got an appointment that I've saved. I'm doing two things in one here for the patient. Everyone's happy. 
and you kind of again it might be the system of the NHS as well I don't think it's entirely undergrad teaching fault you are learn you kind of learning the NHS to survive you're not there to make amazing things you're just there for function and you want to give someone something and send them on their way that sounds about right to me but um it's easy to say that isn't it so um I reckon we'll, we'll wrap it up there. So I think we're going to do another one of these episodes. So next time myself and Steph are talking, we'll probably take you through Steph's year yeah. uh, as an FD yeah. and then experience of doing NHS dentistry. And then the last episode will be when she's escaped the system. So, so if anybody wants to comment on this, send us messages, be pleased to answer any questions. If not, thanks for giving up your Sunday afternoon. Thanks, Steph. We'll talk again soon. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye, guys.